Sports Interaction is your home for NHL playoff betting. You know, for those teams that you cheer for. Right, Steve? I bet on the Leafs to win by two. You, I don't, be- you don't always win. It's not guaranteed. <laughs> I bet on the Leafs to win as well in the seat while we were at the game. I bet yeah. on the Leafs uh, plus one and a half in my bet. Hit. In Unfor- game. Unfortunately, on Sports Interaction, I won money on the Leafs losing. <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. You bet against them? I lo- no, no, no. I bet them to win, yeah. but I got plus one and a half goals. Oh. So I live so bet. I love live betting the Leafs when they're down, and I did did it when they're down one nothing on sportsinteraction.com and I won but the Leafs lost. So Sports Interaction, <laughs> you already know, it's Canada's sports book with the most competitive odds. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, easy to play, easy to cash out. Kind of like what Jesse did. Join now and see all the sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn, which is what Jesse did mid-game. 19 plus, please play responsibly. The Leafs lose. Tampa clogs the neutral zone for a good chunk of the game Leafs can't make uh the entries they want to make you know you know what <laughs> am i wrong no i was gonna i, was, I thought adam was trying to set up a second. <laughs> no no you go you get in get in get in get in the car well, let's no, go no, no because because i know you're setting up the leafs yeah yeah yeah. tell me you're setting like up the leafs things. and i want to give uh tampa their props please dude uh, the fact that they won game seven largely without Nikita Kucherov and without Braden Point. The fact that Braden Point tried to play a shift mm-hmm. after that. And Nick Nick Paul scoring two goals, right? Mm-hmm. And like, the first two of his Stanley Cup playoff career. And and not even they weren't easy goals. Like especially that second one. He nope. just he said I'm going to score and he yep. did. Nick Paul um uh, Andre Vasilevsky, not that great of a series. Mm-hmm. Best game in game seven. That's that's championship DNA, and they showed it in Game Seven, man. They absolutely did, and so yeah, well, uh, so, at no, so. I think you're right, and at no point on this show are we going to take away from Tampa's performance, nope. obviously, no, I because think the, I think the better team won. And that's, no, I just I don't know. You like to get it out of the way right away. Yeah, Tampa clogged the neutral zone, and that was the thing, right? And you, it made the least power plays largely ineffectual. When we talked about at the beginning of the series, how if if Toronto's penalty kill, which had a great game one, but really wasn't as as sturdy afterwards. What did I say when the series began? If you if you collapse in as Toronto's penalty kill, you will lose, and that's what happened. They largely backed off. What I saw, uh, at least from you know from being there, gap control became an issue, and it became an issue more and more over the series. But even on five on five, you could see moments where it's like you see the defenseman backing off, and it's allowing Tampa Bay more options. And so, uh, unfortunately, and I know it was a bit of a low event game until the third period, it, it really did. When you do that, I think there's a psyche, a psyche thing, too. You're not feeling confident enough to close that gap and take a risk. Well, do you know what I'm the saying? Weapons. The weapons. Yeah, the weapons. Kutrov on one side, Stamkos on the other, Hedman at the point. Mm-hmm. Um, they can do that, um, that play that I can't believe they didn't get a goal off of. Mm-hmm. Where it looks like they're setting up Kucherov for a one timer, and then he slap passes it into the slot to point. Mm-hmm. I think Kalorn is in front of the net, dude. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Mm-hmm. What do you do? And and mm-hmm. I think I, I have to tell you, um, the it was painful to be in the arena and see that Tavares goal called back. Oh, I couldn't. So you don't you don't hear the feed, right? No. So imagine my surprise. <laughs> When, uh, like, I just saw Tavares' expression. I'm like, why does he look upset? Mm-hmm. So, again, I'm streaming the game. There's thousands of people watching. I can't hear the uh, the crowd. I can't hear the whistles. I can't hear the commentators. I can't hear nothing. So, imagine my surprise in that moment. <laughs> what, right. what was it like for you guys? Well, we were screaming. We were scre- right. It was probably 10, 15 right. seconds before we even... We probably knew it, though, before the broadcast. Because I watched the whole game back on Sunday. I like to go back and watch the game whenever I... You're uh, a, you're a sick of You didn't hear the whistles. That. So, uh, when, when you, I watched the broadcast back on Sunday, they, he scored the goal, and then they went to commercial. And that whole time, no. it was still a goal. And when they came back from commercial, it wasn't is goal. when when <gasps> in the stadium they were doing the uh, no goal. The ref, West McCauley or whoever, oh, no, my is at the God. is at the ice doing the. It's Can no you imagine goal, being a fa- Imagine we were home watching. Oh yeah, we oh, knew before you know everybody watching on TV. I'm surprised because I don't remember. Right, I d- because I get the broadcast feed. 
Really? Yeah, yeah. That's that's how it went down. They went to commercial and then uh, they came back and they explained oh. the whole penalty. If you were watching it, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what a horrible commercial break. Yeah. Oh. Well, and I lost my mind. Of course. I we lost, all did. I lost my mind for something that is and isn't a penalty. So. And it's, and it's, it's. <sighs> what did you think of the play? I, I, to me. It's, it's why hockey is unwatchable to a non-fan in a nutshell. Like, it is a penalty. Like, Hall, listen, that should be a penalty. Okay. It should. It's, it's interference, not with a hard hit, a stiff hit, a dangerous hit, but it's interference in a way that affects puck position. It's setting a pick, basically, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, that's why I it thought it shouldn't be a penalty. I don't think that's a penalty in the playoffs ever. This Ever. Is, this is the problem is, you know, because I had, you know, the producers are in my ear like, no, no, you're going to want to get another look at this. And I do. But I'm mid rant because now it's coming back to me. I'm mid rant because I'm filling a commercial break. Do you remember now? Well, I'm starting. <laughs> I had to fill time after the Leafs had a goal called back in game seven and we're about to head to the penalty kill. So they make you tap dance the entire commercial break? What would, what was the other option? Run commercials. We don't do that. We don't do that. We've never done that. Oh, be a great opportunity at more revenue. Anyway, I, I think... Uh, it, okay. It's <laughs> this is the How time to solve that. Yeah, this isn't the... Oh my God, look at my 150 heart rate. I was, I was coming undone. So yeah, I had to fill that commercial break. I had only seen the replay a, a couple times. Yeah, there's Tavares, the big celly. And Giordano looks deflated right away. Camera's on the crowd. Crowd's going ballistic. Tampa Bay bench looks dejected. And then this was the shot where I was like, mm -hmm. what's happening? What's happening right now? And they know not only is this not a goal. Look at my face. Look at my face. And that's the producer getting in my ear. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah. believe it. So it's... You can see Steve, by the way, if you're listening to the audio thing, you could see Steve just grabbing his face and then... Well, so... And then like, the, the, here's the thing. Here's when I can tell Steve's intense. His eyebrows are halfway up his forehead. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and, and they don't move. It's a lot of forehead. And so what, what I've started to do, and this is a crutch now, but I, I'm going to have a hard time shaking it, is when I'm getting... When I'm being told information, I grab my headphones. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. No, yeah, to, to communicate to the audience, like I'm someone speaking to me, and I'm yeah. trying. It's a cute. And I have the timeline a little wrong. So they do the call, and then they go to commercial, but they don't have the replay of the interference. So you don't know what. So it was no. So you, you, okay. you have Wes McCauley going, and he makes the power play call. So that happens so before it was, the it commercial. So Wes McCauley, break. not Eric Furlan. Uh, I'm not sure which. I just assume it was Wes McCauley. It doesn't really matter. So he makes the call here. And then they go to commercial break, and then they come back and they explain the penalty kill. Uh, that hey, they're going to the penalty kill, and that was that was the pick. So you know uh, the goals waved off, and then you're kind of left in limbo, and you kind of fill there. So that's the kind of time. Just to get that straight for everybody. Yeah, it, and Anyways. yeah, if you're uh, if you're um, a new fan looking to get into the sport, ah, not for you. No, like <laughs> no, like no. good luck, good like luck. No, no, listen. <laughs> if if you if you've been watching your entire life, you have a shot. At understanding, if you're new, eh, I, know, I, I don't know. I, this might be time to cut bait. <laughs> it was interesting. Morgan Riley uh, said after the game, he's like, I'm not even sure. Look, look at me. I'm calling for the replay. Yeah. I'm like spinning my finger. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Morgan Riley said after the game, I'm not even really sure what the rules are. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Because here's, here's, here's how the refs had set it up. Games one to five, <sighs> they called everything. Everything. Sticks, holds, all that. Game six... Um, they stopped. You saw, you know, every league no, fans were going ballistic game about the one to five in the first period. Okay. After the first period of game five, it all dried up. There it is. So then, you know, you saw Matthews is kind of getting pulled by one of the Tampa players. I forget who it was. Matthews getting uh, pulled by Kalorn. Matthews hitting Riley Kucherov getting from shoved out of the way in front of the net by Ross Colton. Mm -hmm. There was a pick on Matthews. I believe it was in game six high in the zone. 
So yeah, it's a penalty. Yeah, it should probably be called most of the time. It isn't. But I could see the context, right? Where people look at that in a vacuum and go, like if you weren't watching the game, mm -hmm. you look at that and you go, yeah, of course it's a penalty. What the fuck are they complaining about? In the context of what we saw though, they were calling, calling, calling. No, let's stop now. Yeah. And that's, the players asked for it. We asked yep. for it. Yep. Call the game. Yep. Had they continued, remember, game five, middle of the second period to a game, uh, game seven, that's, a game and, or two and a half games or two games or whatever since that had changed. If you set that tone, you have to keep to that tone. Jesse, I'm sorry. I think that call was a direct result of Stamkos raising his arm. I think yep. Stamkos got that call called. On well, the, he has the least fans got one, right? Yeah, the least fans got one. Stamkos has a, a huge reputation around the league. He, there he is raising his hand right there as soon as it happens of being on top of those little things and getting the ref's attention. Like he's great at drawing penalties. Man, and he's always talking to them. And they, they know like, okay, if, if something happens on there, Stamkos is going to be in our ear. He's going to be yelling. And I think him immediately raising his hand at this pick gets the ref's attention, makes that call. And you, you know what's funny? Uh, I was talking to some people and they're like, why doesn't hockey have like a, ch a, a penalty challenge, like a one penalty challenge per game, like the NBA. And, and the reason you can't do that is it'll be a penalty every single time. It'll hmm. be a penalty every single time because, and, and this is why I said in my video, yes, it's a penalty, but what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> B because... There's, there's, how many infractions do you think there are in any given NHL game? 50? <laughs> yeah, probably. My probably. bet is 50. And how many get called? Five? Eight? Sometimes eight? 10? Somewhere between 10 to 15 percent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 10 to 20 percent of infractions in any given game are called. So if you have a challenge, and you, like, let's say you can only use it in the third period or something like that. It's going to get called every time. Mm -hmm. So like if, if the Leafs challenge that to say, no, it's not a penalty, they'd fail the challenge. Absolutely. By the letter of the law, you can call it a penalty. Yeah. But you, like, what, you can, if, what they then works, but if they you're did. able to be like Alex Kalorn on that last play and then Tampa goes, well, we're going to use ours to negate that. Michael Bunting with the inter interference right behind that. It, it's so it, you wouldn't be able to institute it. And this is Wes McCauley, who's done over a thousand games in the NHL and over a hundred in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is Eric Furlat, who's done over a thousand games in the NHL and over a hundred in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is the best we can do. God help us. It, it is what it is, guys. Mm -hmm. so Wes, this, Wes McCauley's revenge on Steve. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Uh, the McCauley Steve revenge game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The score is currently 25 to nothing, Wes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think. Okay. Now, let me let me say this. For all you fans that are not fans of the Leafs, um, it's so sorry. as Leaf oh fans, we are experts in Game Seven. No, we are connoisseurs in Game Seven. We are, we are the sommelier version. I'm going to pretend of know what that Game means. Seven losses. Yeah. And on the scale of horrendous Game Seven losses, let me just say this. Okay. This was the best one. This was the one. And I know that sounds, oh, this is mentality. I'm going to get that in the cat. You can, uh, you can fly a kite. I don't care. The reality was, I finally felt like the Toronto Maple Leafs lost to, a pon to an opponent that truly deserved it versus they a, the Leafs yeah. shot themselves in the foot with being too young, Washington, bad coaching, Boston and Boston, um, being not motivated and coming off a COVID season. And really, the team was full of holes too. Columbus. Montreal, you lose Tavares, Deneau shuts you down, and frankly, you lose a, a series you, you never should have lost. You choked. Yeah. They that, choked last that year. That game was choked in game six. Game game five, game six, game seven, choke, choke, choke. Yeah. I, and, and you know what? If you're a fan of another team and you want to dunk on the Leafs for that, 100%. G game I, seven, the LFR, when I, when I went off after they lost the Montreal series, easiest video I've ever shot. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, you just shit on them for half an hour because they deserved video, it. Easiest, and they deserved every word. Yeah, right. And they deserved every word. I had 48 hours to plan for their inevitable loss. Mm -hmm. Uh, th this year's was incredibly hard because I'm like, I have no idea what to say. Well, and, and it comes down to, so now instantly, even on the way home, we were talking about it, like Jesse and, mm -hmm. uh, Jab Jesse's partner, Gabby and Natalie and I were walking up the street and we're thinking like, okay, where do you go? 
Uh, what do you even do? And and Steve, you've said it before. What would you have done differently? Not a thing. Not a thing. Like, and, and here's the, the, the thing was Toronto was really great in this series. Mm. And the, if, if I were to say one thing, though, guys, and this, it, it, this isn't talent. Um, this is, there is something that this team has struggled with for years that I think was brought back down to a minimum this year, but it does appear in their game is there's, there are moments of sloppy, unfocused hockey. Yep. And when that happens, you get an errant high stick or you get a blind pass that turns into a goal. It, 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 you know, it's the um, sloppy on defensive zone exits that turn into goals. It's, you know, um, you know, you're not looking to see if there's an extra man back when a defenseman's pitching, pinching. And every single time that happened this series, Tampa capitalized. And Tampa, to me, are robotic. It does not matter yeah. what you throw at them. It does not matter that you beat them 5-0 in game one. They just keep coming. And they don't have those moments. And if they do... It doesn't really matter because even if you capitalize on it, they're still going to keep coming. And in the haunting, what, one, of the, one of the things that's going to haunt me the most about this series is not the, the not the penalty situation. The, the you Tavares, can't blame the refs. Yeah, Tavares, at the end of the day, you can't blame the refs. Yeah, Tavares goal called back or not calling Kalorn in overtime. They were healthy. They were healthy. And, and Braden Point's leg exploded. Kucherov was taking like 20 second shifts. Who on the Leafs was hurt? Now, tomorrow we're going to find out, like, guys were playing her. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple guys got, like, off-season surgery. Muzzin's probably on a bunch of stuff just to get on the ice. Yeah, yeah I would not know. be shocked at all. And I wouldn't be shocked if Campbell got surgery. Mm -hmm. and Bunting is probably, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Bunting was, it looked something. like he was hurting. Oh, man, really? I thought he was getting better as the series went. Mm -hmm. He did look better. I but thought he, he was going right. faster. He still didn't look like himself. Let me, let me run you through some names here, guys. Oh. Names and points. Matthews, nine points. Ah! Marner, eight points. Ah! Nylander, seven points. Tavares, six. Probably with the seventh with that goal, if it had gone the right ah. way. Mikheyev had had four. Bunting, Jesse, had three. You know, those are pretty, that's pretty solid for the forward group. Mm -hmm. but, They've all had a three-point game. And by the way, I, I didn't put Morgan Riley in there. Not Morgan enough, Riley had six. Not enough of those are on the power play. This is the number one power play in the league. Mm -hmm. and they didn't show up as the number one power play in the playoffs. Tampa shut them down in that respect. And if you get a couple more power play goals, uh, the series goes completely differently. And I think Kelly Rudy post game uh, on the broadcast had, the, I think, one of the best answers to your question, Adam on what happened here and what where where do you improve and what goes wrong and he said um what went wrong is game two when you have a lead game three when you have a lead game six when you can close it out and, and had a lead and had a lead and those opportunities is where the Leafs struggled it's you had chances here to send tampa home to get a huge lead in the series and every single time they failed to do that every single game there was lapses where they lost and they didn't show up. And those opportunities where you can try, uh, just if it's about effort here, you can put in a little more effort and not let Tampa get into the series. I'm going to do this off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Game one against Washington blew a 2 nothing lead. Game six against Washington, you were leading in the third period. Game seven against Boston the next year, you're leading in the third period. Game <laughs> well, well, you game, had six the and series seven. last year. You had a three one lead. Well, you had six it. and seven in the second Boston series to close it out. The Leafs were up three two. Oh, shit, mm -hmm. you're right. You had a three two. But series you played lead Matthews eighteen minutes. In in oh, mm. <laughs> you had a three two series lead in 2019. Glossed over that one. You're right. A eureka comeback in game yeah, four against Columbus. None of you were interested in. Yeah, in there. <laughs> they didn't care about that series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you weren't interested in being there, and we weren't interested in watching you no. beat it. Um, Th that might have been my my least favorite year, the Columbus oh, year. What a miserable! It was a bad year. year. That was that was the David Ayers year. That was a bad year. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, and like in retrospect, after watching this season with the Leafs, God, the the nineteen twenty season, what a piece of shit. What a piece well, of and I shit. think I think it started. If you talk about 1920, it starts with 20 games of Babs, and I think it's hard to shake that. And I think it, the team got, was done. It got fun when I, Keith was in there, and they what were they, they won like, like 18 and two, 15 and five in 20 games. Yeah, and they're, they're like, oh yeah. man, we look way too good. Let's shed that skin. Yeah, and immediately well, go back. And then they to, were too out. And then the world shut down on your birthday. And then, <laughs> and then the, yeah, but they were shit well long before that. Right, they right. might not have made the playoffs. By the they, way, they didn't. it wasn't fun. The Zamboni driver video for Steve passed a million views this weekend. Hooray! Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. You got a million per Oh, Come yeah, on. finally.